think it's normal to not know like what to do, how to function in general. It's hard looking at, you know, uh, x-rays of myself and seeing how curved I was and still am because I know that while it says 32 degrees, which is not close to, it's not 40 or 50 degrees, you know, which is in the surgery area, just eight degrees of a difference and it would put me in that area. And that number seems so small, you know, that little window. And so it's, it's very challenging to face that because it may be my reality. Someday I hope it's not. Doctors have made it seem like it's not going to be, but I don't know. I never know, you know, like it's my future, but it's dictated by my spine. Um, but I do think it's hard to know like what what the future is gonna look like and no doctor no youtuber nothing can tell you that all I can tell you is my experience and what I know from other people and encourage you Hearing that if my back brace didn't work, I would need surgery was so terrifying. As a child, I all I could see is that if I got surgery, my life was over. And it was something that deeply motivated me when I was a kid to wear my brace, um, you know, in the proper way I should have been. Uh, but it also really instilled fear into me. It gave me a lot of anxiety, a lot of panic. Hello everybody and welcome back to Cat's Corner. My name is Cat and this is my corner of YouTube. Welcome back to the second episode of our brand new series talking about scoliosis and having a back brace. Today I am going to be talking about treatment options for scoliosis and therefore introducing the back brace and what it is all about. This video may be a little bit longer because I do want to fully inform, uh, you know, what the options are, but I also want you guys to know that I will be putting down below a little timestamp for where in the video you can skip if you just want to see a certain uh, treatment option and so forth and so on. So to get right into it, what treatment options are there? Well, there's mainly two types of treatment. There is a back brace and there is surgery. Now, if you have a lesser degree of your curve of the spine, you may not need either of these treatments and you may simply be under observation, which is where your doctor will take x-rays of your back, maybe even an MRI or a CAT scan, and they will just have follow-up visits to make sure that the curve of your back isn't progressing, getting worse, or doing anything weird or funky. But if you do have a more severe curve, these treatment options that I'm about to talk about will come into play. Now, before we get into the actual treatment options, we should talk about how do you assess what treatment options you may need? What are the criteria that people and doctors look for when talking about uh, treatment options? The first one is spinal maturity. Basically, has your skeleton stopped growing or no? This is very important within adolescents especially to determine whether they can have a back brace and we'll talk about that in a moment. But spinal maturity 
will be looked at by taking x-rays of a person's bones and determining if they have closed in the certain growth areas and or if they are still open and still growing. The way my doctor did that, and I will pop up a picture right now, is by taking an x-ray of my wrists. There is a growth plate in your wrists that close at a certain age and or a certain point in your maturing process and this determines that your skeleton has stopped growing and you are spinally, spinally, skeleton wise mature. Uh, this uh, x-ray that I've popped up shows that the growth plate has been hit. Um, if I can figure it out, I will circle it on the x-ray. If not, just know that uh, the x-ray does show it I'm not an expert doctor, but I I know more about the back x-rays than I do the wrist x-rays. But I know getting this x-ray was huge for me because it determined that I was getting towards the end of wearing my back brace. Next is... Degree and extent of curvature. As I said in the beginning, if you are at a lesser degree of curvature, you may not need a back brace or surgery. And for each treatment option, they have a degree and curvature extent that must be hit and in the uh, vicinity of before the option can actually be presented. This is typically 25 degrees and higher. Next is location of the curve. I will pop up the picture that I did last time talking about what kind of location of curves there are. There is thoracic, which is our upper back, and there is lumbar, which is our lower back. And then obviously there's everything in between and combinations of the two. Thoracic curves, top of the back, are more likely to progress or get worse than that of the lumbar region, which means if you have a fairly significant curve of the thoracic type, your doctor may consider treatment. Whereas if it's a lumbar curve, and especially if you're older, they may not take it into a treatment realm just yet. And lastly, what is the possibility of curve progression? This means, and it kind of ties in with spinal maturity, you know, how likely is it that your spine is going to take off? You know, what are the chances that your decree, degree of curvature is going to get worse? When you're a child or an infant and you are discovered to have scoliosis, you, the chance of you having spinal uh, curve progression is way higher than in adolescents and adults, and especially with adults. Adults' spines aren't growing anymore. They're not actively moving. And so for a spine to progress, it's more rare, but still possible. But for a child or an adolescent, spinal uh, movement is way higher, especially if they haven't hit that growth spurt around the time of puberty. So your doctor, if you are under that puberty growth spurt and it is found out that you have a more extensive curve, they may want to correct it right away rather than waiting because after that growth spurt and once your spine hits maturity, it is harder to correct. So let's get into treatment options. The first that I'm going to be talking about is the one that I am the most familiar with and we will be talking about very extensively on this channel and that is the back brace. My back brace, I might have shown you last time, looked like this. This was my last brace 
This is the inside. This is the back, side, side, and front. This type of brace is called the Rosenberger brace or Rosenberger. And it is the most common type of back brace. It uh, does not require any sort of strapping under the arms or around the neck as braces used to need in, you know, uh, the past. The point of a back brace is to lessen the curve of the spine and keep uh, the curve from progressing while growth. So for me, when I was just six years old, they discovered I had scoliosis and I had pretty severe scoliosis as well. So they fit me for a brace and I got this little guy. Isn't it cute? It used to have stickers all over it, but uh, we took it off. Um, and this was my pal starting at the end of first grade. Uh, so far, it is the most effective form of treatment for children and adolescents due to the fact that it is not invasive, meaning nothing has to be cut open, and it holds the spine while you grow so that it's not, you know, going all over the place. It is only effective in patients, however, that haven't reached skeletal maturity. And that's when I was talking about spinal maturity earlier. That's what I mean. If you have already hit skeletal or spinal maturity, a back brace isn't gonna work. Now, sometimes after surgery, bracing may be needed, but otherwise an adult is not really going to wear a back brace unless it is for other reasons on top of scoliosis. Also, uh, the back brace will be recommended if you have a curve between 25 degrees and 40 degrees. Uh, in my last video, I said something along the lines of like 28 and 27 degrees, uh, but looking back on x-rays, I believe my curve was actually closer to um, 28 degrees and 32. Okay, so when it talks about curvature being 25 degrees to 40 degrees, uh, that means that your spine at some point is of that curvature or higher. I'm going to show you guys some pictures right now, uh, or x-rays really, um, that show my spine. It, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Um, whoops. Uh, this, yeah, these two are going to be hard to see. Um, this is, I believe, the first x-ray that I had with my brace on. Uh, you can tell because there's buckles right here and then there's like hinge things in the x-ray. But with my back brace on, my curvature was 19 degrees right around here, uh, 12, 13 degrees right like below or middle to end of the rib cage and at the bottom it was like two degrees which means with this brace it, the bottom part of me was really straightening out the top part of me however was still quite curved and then when we skip forward to the last one of the last x-rays that I can find, which was in 2013. I am not wearing my brace in this one and I will explain all of that in another video. Here you can see my spine and up here I have a 32 degree curve and down here I have a 28 degree curve. 
so my lumbar curve was at 28 and my 32 degree curve was at er, and my thoracic curve was at 32 degrees um well my curvature was higher and that may seem like I went backwards in progress. I will explain in another video kind of why that happens and also the first x-ray I showed was before puberty and the second picture that I showed was actually right around the time I was hitting puberty and shortly right after. So the fact that my curve is higher is not surprising and is nothing to be alarmed at either. So, a back brace is typically worn between 16 to 23 hours of the day, depending on the severity of the curve, the age of the person, circumstances, yada yada yada. For me, 23 hours a day was what it was, and it typically was closer to 22 hours of the day because the doctor let me have one hour out and then one hour for like bathing, showering, stuff like that. Also, um, back braces are often used because about 80% of the time, if used effectively, uh, they are 80% effective. Uh, that basically means if you are wearing your brace like your doctor said, you are following instructions, you are doing it to the most amount of time in the best way possible, the chances of it working successfully is about 80%. For me it worked, and for a lot of people it worked, but I also know sometimes it doesn't work. And in cases like that, we have to talk about surgery. Now, surgery is very scary if taught, told to uh, for a child, and for me, when I first heard uh, the word surgery, it terrified me. Gave me nightmares, literally. But it is a realistic thing that some people have to go through, especially adults, and I want to talk about it and what it is and what it may uh, require. So the goals in children uh, for like surgery is to stop the curve from progressing and to diminish spinal deformity. This may mean that if a kid at a young age is already starting to hunch over, their shoulders are already very uneven, if there's curving of the back, anything like that, they may snap right to surgery because you want to stop that before it gets to a point where it is deeply inconveniencing your life or causing other serious issues because while scoliosis may just seem like your spine is curving, it can actually do a lot of harm to the body if untreated. So in order to, I guess, like, qualify for surgery, you got to be at 40 degrees or higher. And in adults, it's typically 50 degrees or higher. And with adults, they also look at if there is nerve damage in your legs and, and or you are experiencing urinary or bowel symptoms. Now, I don't know much about the urinary bowel issues, but I do know about the uh, nerve issues in the legs because I do struggle with nerve issues on my right leg. I basically can't feel the whole um, right side or outer portion of my right leg from the top of my hip to the right before my knee. I can't really feel it and occasionally it hurts, stings, tingles, basically the nerves are screwed up. Um, a lot of doctors have tried figuring out what it is and basically they've come to the conclusion that throughout my bracing uh, experience and getting unbraced and then having to like 
settle, my spine is pinching some nerves here or there and causing this pain in my leg because I also have really bad knots in the right portion of my lower back. And this is also most likely attributed to my scoliosis. So, fun stuff. Anywho, two types of surgery. What are they? Anterior and posterior. For those of you that don't know what those words mean, posterior means in surgical terms that the patient would be lying on the front, on their front, and doctors would go in through the back. And anterior means that the patient would be lying on their side and the doctors would go in through the side. Now, posterior surgery is most frequently uh, used with adolescents and involves spinal fusion with instruments and bone fusion, or bone grafting, I'm sorry. Um, for those of you who may wonder what I'm looking at, I've written all this down so that I can remember. <laughs> uh, anywho, basically what this means is you get a metal rod clamped to your spine and in the areas of the curve they use bone grafting to really uh, adhese the bone to the metal. Is that scary sounding? Absolutely. Is it scary to hear from a doctor? Absolutely. Did it give me nightmares? <laughs> absolutely however you can get through it it is not impossible I know people have had to have that surgery and they live productive lives today so even though the surgery stuff that I'm talking about right now or even the back brace stuff that I'm talking about sounds terrifying People live productive lives with these things, and I want that to be very clear, because the whole part, bleh, the whole point of this series is to show you guys that it is possible to live with scoliosis and the treatment options needed and still be a successful human being. Going on to anterior, I don't know much about this surgery type because the type that they talked about with me since I was a child and adolescent is posterior so I don't know much about anterior except for that what they basically do is they go in through your side they deflate one of your lungs take out a rib so that they can get to your spine and then do the correction from there um, to me this sounds terrifying but it it does say that there is a better deformity correction and improved spine mobilization along with fewer uh, fusions of spine segments in this type of surgery so there is that benefit whereas um, however the risks maybe that patients may still need bracing after the surgery in order to help them recover and maintain correction and there is a higher uh, risk of morbidity um, so whereas the posterior is more like guaranteed correction it is also way more invasive and but you also may not need bracing afterwards. Now, there is something called MIS, which is um, uh, minimally invasive surgery, and this can work in some cases. It requires uh, smaller uh, incisions, less, you know, less invasive procedures. Um, however, depending on the severity of your spinal curve and depending on your situation, this may or may not work. So I can't guarantee that that will work. Now, last but not least, what are the treatment options that a person can do without being braced or put on a surgery table or even with this? One, stretching. 
stretch, stretch, stretch. When you're out of your brace, stretch. When you're in your brace, do the best you can to stretch. Because flexibility is significantly decreased when um, wearing a brace. I will show you guys in another video basically the range of movement that I had. But if you look at this brace to when I wore it, this goes up to almost the top of my back. This goes right under my boobs. This is like the bottom of my torso. And this goes slightly past uh, my hips and like down the very uh, top portion of my butt. So my movement wasn't uh, very there. <laughs> you know, I could bend about here a little bit and I could bend at the waist a little bit and that was about it. I couldn't even touch my knees. That's how, or I could touch my knees. I couldn't go further. That's how unflexible, inflexible, unflexible? Hmm, I don't know how unflexible I was. Stretching and doing that when you can is so important to keep your body mobile, to keep uh, spinal mobilization increased. That was something I never did. I just, I didn't see that I would ever get out of my brace, even though I knew it. I just never saw it. And so I never really thought that I would ever get to a point in which I would be flexible. Then I got out of my brace and oh boy, did I have a rude awakening to how unflexible I was and how weak I was. And that's my next point, physical exercise. It is so important to keep yourself physically active because your brace, it kind of immobilizes your core. It doesn't give you the opportunity to strengthen your core a lot because it does all the support you would need. And the problem with me is I never, I, I don't like exercise. I don't like sports. I didn't like any of it. So I just didn't do it. Any excuse I could do, uh, any excuse I could use to get out of gym, out of anything I would use. And so then when I did get off my brace and I had to do fitness testing for the first time, man, was I in for a rude awakening. I was not prepared for what was coming. I couldn't even do a sit up. And I don't mean like sort of, no. I like couldn't get my body off the ground because I'd never had to because I had always been exempt from the sit-up portion of fitness testing or if I wasn't I could just do like little mini sit-ups and so then I had no excuse and I looked real bad um, but I'll talk about the horrors of fitness testing in another video um, but basically, it's very important to take care of yourself, even when it's harder and it doesn't really seem to make sense, you still gotta do it. It's still very important, because if you don't do it, you'll regret it later, like I did. Now, I am much more flexible, and I am much more physically uh, strong than I was when I first got my brace off. But it took a lot of work and a lot of stretching and sit-ups and late night panic attacks. You know, it, it took a lot of effort. And I wish that I had known that doing physical activity is very, very important. Uh, your back doctor may even tell you to go to physical therapy because physical therapy can really help you strengthen the muscles that you may be losing while wearing your back brace. So if you're wearing a back brace, talk to your doctor. Do they think that physical therapy may help keep you flexible, keep you strong, X, Y, Z? It may even help improve your curve in ways that you didn't know. I never went to physical therapy, 
but since then, because of the nerve issues I've had, I had to go to physical therapy a lot, a lot, a lot, and it was kind of hard to reverse what had already happened. So do it now while you can, rather than looking back and being like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Because that, that'll be your biggest regret. Okay, I am so happy that my first episode for you guys got such a great response. I got so many views within the first, you know, however many hours of upload, and I hope that this second one is just as successful, because now we are really getting into the content of the series and what I really want to be talking about, and the, you know, the actual serious issues. So. Today we talked about back braces, surgery, self-care, and what shall be coming. The next episode is going to start to be talking, that made no sense, is going to be talking about the back brace. Basically, what is the back brace? What is the process of getting a back brace? You know, back brace 101. Um, if you guys have any questions about having a back brace, please leave it down below. I may even include a Q&A portion of this series. Um, if you are, yeah, any questions, anything, feel free to message me on my social media. I have Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I also will see any comment that you post on these videos. Um, post comments, post concerns, post questions. If it's more private, just message me and don't worry, uh, the news goes nowhere. Um, yeah, anything that you may need. If you are in crisis, uh, physical crisis, emotional crisis, anything like that, I am not the person to come to. Call a doctor, go to the ER, do not look to me to be your 911. Uh, the back, you know, scoliosis and having a back brace or needing surgery can be very overwhelming, and I completely understand that. And if there is something that I can do to help, let me know. Please tell me. I want to know. However, if it is something way more serious or life threatening, even, go to the ER, call 911. Don't joke around because it's very serious. I hope all of you guys have a fabulous morning, night, afternoon, evening, daytime, wherever you may be. And I can't wait to see all of you guys on the next episode of the Back Brace series when we really get into the Back Brace. What is it? How is it? Why is it? Where is it? and so much more.